Praise the Lord. It's so wonderful to be able to worship together. We'd like to invite you to stand with us as we worship the Lord today. You know, we are here and we can sing those words like he lights up the darkest nights. And it's all because of Jesus. He has won the victory. Amen. <laughs> Hello, yes, hello, and amazing. welcome here. Wow. Oh, it's so exciting. Yeah. Okay, you guys can grab a seat. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Scott, and this is Heather. Yes, I'm Heather, and this is Scott. Yeah. Yeah, we're so excited to be here with you tonight. And I don't know if, you know, you know, you know, at a hockey game when they have that camera and they can pan the crowd, you know? We really need one of those because there's a young lady down here who is enjoying that worship service so much. 
In fact, I expect you all to be dancing and cheering the way she did in yeah, this she, uh, next worship part. She was part. excited, right? Yeah. Yes. And tonight's an incredible night. Um, uh, we are celebrating baptism this weekend. And we have people who are being baptized right here in the room. So let's just give them some encouragement yeah. before they head backstage to get ready for that. We love baptism. We love being able to celebrate people's next step in their journey of faith and their obedience to Christ. So, so excited for everyone who's going to be baptized tonight. Yeah, if you Oh, have... and one more thing no. before I forget. Um, those of you online, make sure that you're celebrating too. Put a celebratory emoji of some kind in the chat when we're doing our, our baptisms. That would be fantastic. We want to celebrate with you too. What would a celebratory baptism I emoji like be? Hands? I would, yeah. I don't know. With Who like does emojis? rain like, or water? I don't. Yeah, maybe. A Diving, splash? swimming. Yeah, maybe like a like a dolphin. Maybe. I don't know. We're definitely over time. Okay. Well, if you have any questions or just want to connect, please text hello uh, to this. We also have lots of weekly updates. They're all on QR codes and websites. Just go on and find out what's happening. Yeah, we have our FAC website, our, our FAC experience app, the QR code when you came in. Also, if if you are new here, um, you can uh, you, or you want to fill out a contact card, you can do that on any of those platforms. Um, we would love to get in touch with you. If you would like prayer, you can do it there as well. Also, our realm, you can text realm, and you can be a part of our FAC com FAC community on there as well. It's a great way to start getting connected to FAC. We are in the middle of our sermon series, Hebrews, mm -hmm. and uh, Pastor Les is going to be preaching tonight. It's still a mystery to me. I haven't heard him yet, so I'm very excited. So I think it's, the title is, Are We at Risk? Are We at Risk? I don't know what we're at risk for. I think it's the drift, but let's let Les do the yeah. teaching on that because he's much better than I, well, we, we are. Well, you could let me do it, um, but it's risky. Yeah, it's risky. Do you see we'll what I did Les. there? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Anyways, let's keep this excitement up. Let's, I, you guys, we got to get back on our feet because this team here is amazing. So Tolu, let's lead. Let's get into worship. Come on, guys. Stand with us. Woo! Amen. Okay. I don't know what kind of week you've had, but on that note, we want to intentionally say yes to Jesus Amen. today. You know, when you say yes... You give consent, you give approval, it opens doors. And when we say yes to the Lord, we open the door for him to do what he will do in our lives. So let's say yes tonight. I'm trading my sorrows, and I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Persecuted, not abandoned. Shot down, but not destroyed. I am left beyond a curse. Christ promise will endure. That is joy.
South America and Asia and Europe and Africa and declare yes, Lord, in other languages. Would you sing with us in Spanish today? Si, Señor, si, Señor, si, Señor, si, si, Señor. You say, si, Señor, si, si, Señor. Keep doing that because it's a daily choice to say yes to Jesus every day. And I encourage you, keep saying yes, and he will move in mighty ways. But we're only able to do this today because of Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So we're going to declare tonight, he's our hope, he's our everything. Sing in Christ alone with us today.
we do we do believe God we believe in God the Father and we believe in Jesus Christ the Son and we believe in the Holy Spirit oh three in one God we are so so grateful for you that you would for in love for, for us send your son that you would and give us the Holy Spirit so that we could be close to you. God, all these things, we can't even begin to thank you for what you have done for us. 
God, your love for us is something beyond anything we can ever understand. And for that, we just wanna, we just wanna lean in, God. We wanna feel your love. We, we, we are here tonight to learn and to grow and to meet with you. God, we wanna meet with you tonight. Would your Holy Spirit please be here in this place with us tonight? And God, we just wanna lift up those people being baptized tonight. God, the power of that testimony, it talks about it uh, in your word, the power of our testimony. And that is what they are doing tonight. They are testifying that they are ready for that next step with you. They are in obedience with you, showing death to life in you. And so God, thank you. Pray that they would just step forward in courage. And God, would they just declare tonight their love for you. And God, we want to celebrate with them. Thank you that we can do this together. Thank you that we can celebrate here t in this building, um, uh, in this place with you present here with us. God, we love you. And there's nothing that compares to your love for us. God, if only we could reciprocate that in even a little bit. Know that tonight we are here for you. God, we love you. In the name of the Father, and the God our Father, in the name of Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because you can sit down. Thanks, guys. Sorry. Oh, it's all good. They should be able to sit down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so good. Because you give, we are able to do so many things here. There's so many opportunities to grow uh, because of your giving and our giving. And uh, there's there's lots of them. I know that you know the youth that the uh, you know the kids are getting their youth stuff opened up again. We've got tons of classes coming up. You know there is just so many opportunities in this church. I know they're looking for people to volunteer as things get opened up again. More and more ministries as we get this all figured out in this ever changing world. And so we are just so thankful for that. And uh, in the midst of all that, there's a bunch of stuff you need to know. So watch this video. One of the ways we build lives that honor God is by taking steps to keep growing. Spiritual growth matters to us as a church. And we want to know Jesus, but also become more like him beyond our weekend services. There are a few opportunities coming up at FAC designed to help us grow. We've got a study on the book of Mark, a course on prayer, a financial freedom class, and more. So check out FACCalgary.com or text events to the number on the screen to learn more. And together, let's keep growing as followers of Jesus. It's nice to see you all, and if you're online, greetings to you as well. This Hebrew series has been fantastic, and if you were with us last weekend, you'll recall that the question was revolving around this idea of does God care, and the compelling argument that yes, he does, and that you and I can be the rich beneficiaries of that care. And so it was a wonderful opportunity I want us to extend that thought because the reality is, yes, God does care for you. And one of the ways he cares for you and me is that he loves us enough and cares about us enough that he's not willing to leave us where we are. That he wants to move in our hearts and our minds. He wants to give us everything that we need so that we can continue to move forward because there's a danger of not appropriating all that God intends you and I to live out and experience in the Christian life. In fact, the passage that we're going to look at tonight with its challenges and cautions and warnings is really a good opportunity for us to just stop and reflect on this with the hopes that we can experience the comfort and all the other blessings that God so richly wants to pour into our lives. So you may recall that 
Hebrews is actually a sermon. It was being preached. And so we have a portion of that sermon that I want us to listen to, and then I'm going to do a sermon on the sermon. How's that? Sounds a little weird, doesn't it? But that's the way we're going to roll. So you can follow along on the screen, or if you have your Bible with you, we're going to start in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11, and we're going to read through to 6, 12. Let's read the Word of God together. We have much to say about this, but it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers... You need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teachings about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about the cleansing rites, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment, and God permitting, we will do so. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. To their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. Land that drinks in the rain, often falling on it, and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is farmed, receive the blessing of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. In the end, it will be burned. Even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are convinced of better things in your case, the things that have to do with salvation. God is not unjust he will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word written, prepared, kept, and now by your Spirit being applied to our lives so many years after that first hearing of it. Father, we bow in your presence and we say, speak. We're listening. We ask you to work and move in our hearts and thank you for your love for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. See, the concern of the preacher in this part of the sermon is about Christian maturity. And the people that he's speaking to, their development has been stalled out. They aren't moving forward. And this becomes the concern that the preacher needs to address because it impedes their ability to understand what he is teaching and other challenges are also developed out of it as well. See, there's a need to be maturing so that we can embrace the rich realities of the gospel and the Christian life to the very end. Verse 11, we have much to say about this, but it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. That's a very dangerous place to be. And in the original text, he's talking to them about this idea of the priesthood of Jesus, and he wants to go deeper still. And you get this sense of his frustration, knowing that his listeners simply aren't ready to hear what he has to say. You no longer try to understand. And the idea here is that they become hard of hearing, they're not listening. 
And as the word of God is being poured out before them, as the spirit of God is speaking to them, they're not attentive. They become lazy. All shadows of the meanings and the words that he's using. And this idea of being lazy is an idea that will come up at the end of our passage as well. It kind of bookends this segment of Hebrews. The frustration is that the audience should be well equipped to understand this sermon, what he's teaching, but they're stuck. So he continues on. He says, in fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk... Being still an infant is not acquainted with the teachings about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Now, let's be clear. Who doesn't love a baby? Right? They're adorable. You know, and if you, and if you end up being close to a baby that's small enough, they have that new baby smell right? And they got all those little gurgles and they make all those little noises and like it's just the coolest thing, right? Who doesn't love a little baby? They're cute. But if they're still functioning like that when they're two or three or six or seven or in their teens, nobody's going to be happy about that. That's going to be deemed to be a huge problem. And there's going to be all kinds of concern because this little one is stuck. And they're missing out on all kinds of new things. See, it's a process of continual growth, taking them on a journey of development and maturing that ultimately has them functioning as an independent and an interdependent adult. Now, when you look at that little one and you see them at the various stages, let's be clear, sometimes you wonder if they're ever going to get there, right? And yet that's the goal. That's where they're heading. This idea of being this functioning, independent, and interdependent adult. And at every stage, they can handle new things and are increasingly capable. The preacher here The one who's preaching this sermon is frustrated because they're not developing spiritually. They're stuck. They're that infant that isn't moving forward. By now, they should be teaching the basics to others. They should be on the leading edge of what's going on, and yet they're still stuck there themselves. They're unable to come to grips with what the preacher wants to teach them. This idea of living on milk, being still an infant. It means that they're not acquainted with the teachings about righteousness. Friends, that's a problem. It means that because they're not eating solid food, which is for the mature, and by having it constantly, they're not training themselves to be able to distinguish between good and evil. That's a problem. See, no longer cute little infants. Instead, they should be developing a deeper understanding of righteousness and training themselves to distinguish between good and evil, constantly feeding on the solid food of the scriptures and their knowledge of God. And friends, if there was ever a time when we needed to make sure that was true of us, it's now, isn't it? Rooted and grounded So many moral and ethical dilemmas. Such a lack of clarity on how we should live and what our purpose is. So many voices clamoring to be the authoritative source. Giving us the inside scoop. Those that are stuck in spiritual infancy aren't going to be able to sort these things out. And the impacts will be And are devastating. Not just to the individual, but to the community that they're a part of, whether that be a family or a social group or a church. 
We need to be continually growing, developing, so that we can continue to live and respond in ways that honor God. But the reality is that this isn't a given. It doesn't happen by default. No, the default so often seems to be stagnation and drift. We do tend to get stuck. It's really not just that they were stuck. If we think about it for a minute, it's worse than that. They're actually losing ground. Because as they're stalled out in this baby state, every day they stay stuck there. They're falling further behind from where they should be. Therefore, in light of this, the preacher says, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward towards maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about cleansing rites, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment, and God permitting, we will do it. And here he lists some of the basics. He talks about both sound doctrine and he talks about correction from those that would have wanted in in their case as Jewish believers to inject Jewish laws and customs back into their foundational beliefs about the church. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death. That's been dealt with. It was accomplished through the finished work of Christ. Knowing what it means to have faith in God. Knowing that this notion about cleansing rites no longer applies to them as a result of what Jesus has done. The laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. These are the elementary teachings that he believes that they should have as a foundation, but that they must move past. I wonder how comfortable we are even with those foundational teachings, the basics. Here's a question that kind of relates to where they were at because part of their struggle related to this. How clear were they on the difference between religion and a relationship with Jesus? And that's a great question for us. How clear are we on the difference between religion and religious activity and what it means to have a relationship with the living God? And are we moving on to maturity, having these things as a foundation that allows us to continually being built and growing and having a robust faith? See, we need to be intentional in the nurturing of our faith. You see this pattern throughout the scriptures. You go back to 1 Samuel 2.26. And the boy Samuel continued to grow in stature and in favor with the Lord and with the people. Jesus Look at what it says about him in Luke chapter 2. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and with man. Jesus growing, developing. Samuel, same thing. Listen to this beautiful passage in Colossians chapter 1. As this prayer, this heart of prayer is laid out for the people. For this reason... Since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good gift or every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. What a beautiful prayer. And then in 2 Peter 1, verses 5 to 8, For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. Now listen to what it says. For if you possess these things in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Increasing measure, growing, developing, maturing. The Bible is clear. We are to be growing. And in chapter 5, he talks about the danger of being stuck as an infant in the faith, not acquainted with the teachings about righteousness, 
unable to distinguish between good and evil. But the sermon then goes on into what is one of the most challenging passages in the whole Bible. Let's read at verse 1 again in chapter 6. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again, again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about cleansing rites, the laying on of hands and the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment, and God permitting, we will do so. Again, the focus is on moving forward, on maturity. And I love the preacher's optimism here in verse 3. And God permitting, we will do so. But it goes on in verse 4. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, And who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. To their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. And then he goes on to paint a picture to illustrate this. Land that drinks in the rain often falling on it and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is, who is farming it, receives the blessing of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. In the end, it will be burned. These verses have been the source of much thought and difference of opinion down through the ages, and the variety of interpretations continues to this day. But one thing we know, The text is meant to amplify the reality that there is no middle ground when it comes to following Jesus. You're either being drawn towards him and to Christ-likeness, or you are drifting away. The question for them and the question for us is simple. Are we moving towards Jesus or away from him? See, if you're moving towards Jesus, you have nothing to worry about. You just continue to pursue Jesus and Christ-likeness. If you're not moving forward and you know it, and you respond today to the conviction of the Holy Spirit, his grace is sufficient for you. And if you're resisting, then this passage is a warning to you. Repent. Turn around and go the other direction. See, often the way to these verses relates to those that we care about. We're concerned about a family member or our friend's spiritual state. And that's appropriate for us. And we should be loving them and praying for them. I love what verse 10 in chapter 6 says because it helps me really come to grips with all of this. This mystery that's in this passage. It's simple. God is not unjust. Don't you love that? God is is not unjust. We can trust him to deal with each situation according to his perfect character. What a lovely place to land. The truth is that far greater minds than mine have studied these verses down through the centuries to no unanimous conclusion. There's mystery attached to this passage And yet we do know this, that it amplifies the risks and the dangers of drifting. And the remainder of our passage shows the preacher's confidence in the way forward for these people. Yes, the word of correction was firm, was clear, but he still has great confidence. Even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are convinced of better things in your case. The things that have to do with salvation. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. It's interesting, in the entire book of Hebrews, this passage right here, is the only place where he refers to them with this intimate phrase of dear friends. He reaches to them out of love. I love the next part in it. 
God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him, God, as you have helped his people and continue to help them. (coughs) Loving people in Jesus' name. What an amazing thing to be able to be said of us. Verse 11. Continue to grow, to make progress, so that you will live up to your high calling. This idea, I love the way it's put there, so that what you hope for may be fully realized. Friends, what you and I hope for will not be fully realized if we get stuck as infants, if we begin to drift. We need to continue to pursue Jesus wholeheartedly. It's a wonderful invitation. I like in verse 12 where it says this, we do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. I wonder, this is just me thinking out loud, I wonder if that verse isn't actually pointing ahead to what he will say in chapter 11 in the hall of faith. Giving example after example after example of people who lived out a life of faith and that ultimately, although they didn't experience the fullness of Jesus coming in their day. They experienced what it meant to have a life that was connected to the living God. And here in this passage, it's interesting, three words jump out at me. You see them throughout the scriptures and they're so powerful. Love, love, hope, and faith. We hear them throughout the scriptures. But it's a, it's a call to continue to live out of love, out of hope, out of faith. And so the invitation is there for us. And again, is at the beginning of this passage, a call to not become lazy, but to grow. To move forward. Well, you know, you get to a sermon, you, you sit there and you think about it, and you kind of go, okay, so what's the point? <laughs> what's the point? I don't think you could find a simpler point then this passage's theme, keep growing. Keep growing. Keep pursuing Jesus. Don't get stuck. Don't drift. Just keep growing. I love the way James kind of amplifies this when he says in James 1.22, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Right? The scriptures, it's simple right? Get in the word, read what it says, and then do it. And trust the spirit of the living God to move and work in your life. See, our growth needs to be just seeped in the word of God. It's steeped in it. And it has to be spirit-based. We follow the examples of the saints. We think of growth in terms of our mission. This idea of building lives that honor God. Friends, For us to have lives that honor God, we need to be moving towards him. For us to have lives that honor God, we have to be moving towards him. This is what we aspire to. It's why we talk all the time about our life commitments. Connect, grow, serve, share, honor. These are incredible themes that are discipleship themes that are weaved throughout the entire scriptures. Friends, if you're worried about drifting, I can give you a a perfect way to allay that fear. Get connected with other believers. Pretty hard to drift in your small group. Pretty hard to drift in your prayer group. Pretty hard to drift when you're connected and engaged with other people. You, You saw all the grow opportunities that are available. Take advantage of one of those. Get onto Write Down Media. Take a look at something that piques your interest. Go to you version and start a Bible reading on a theme that is of interest to you. Carry on in your growth. And then serve and share. It's tough to drift when you're engaged in mission. It drives us to dependence. It drives us to faith. It drives us to this intensity in our spiritual experience. And then, of course, even tonight as we've gathered here, as we've watched online, worshiping together, communing with the living God together, it's an amazing thing. So I I just want to ask you a question. Which of these core discipleship focuses needs your attention right now? Which one would be good for you to just kind of gear down onto 
in order to help you continue to pursue Jesus. I have uh, two granddaughters. One is three and the other is six. I've seen Frozen 2 multiple times. But I remember the first time I saw it because there was a phrase and there was a powerful song in that movie that I thought, oh, that'll preach. That'll preach. It was such a simple phrase. Maybe if you've seen the movie, you'll remember it. It was just do the next right thing. Brilliant. Just do the next right thing. Pick up your cross daily. Just do the next right thing. Pray without ceasing. Just do the next right thing. Hide his word in your heart. Just do the next right thing. Live out the great commandment and the great commission. Just do the next right thing. Don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. How daily? Just do the next right thing. Oh, friends, that's the invitation for us today. I don't know what the Spirit of God is saying to you, but I believe and I'm praying that he's speaking to every one of us. And the invitation is to just do the next right thing. To move, to grow, to pursue our God. Let's just take a moment and pray together. And I want to pray for some of you within the sound of my voice that as the word has washed over you, it's been clear to you, uh, I'm not growing. I am stuck. And I need that to change. So right now, just say, oh God, I'm sorry. Forgive me. He will forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness and he will continue to draw you to himself. Just take a moment and have that time with God. Some of you, you may be listening and realize for the first time that I've bought into religion, but I've never bought into a relationship with Jesus. And to you, it's a simple invitation to just say, Jesus, I've been living life my own way. I've been doing my own thing. Oh, forgive me. I'm sorry. I want to turn and follow you. And so I invite you into my life as Savior. I surrender my life to you as Lord. Thank you that right now, in this moment, everything changes. Perhaps for you, it's just that reaffirmation that yes, I'm gonna grow. I'm gonna pursue the living God. Just take a moment and say yes to Jesus. We heard it in our worship set. Say yes to Jesus. I'm going to do the next right thing and I know clearly what it is. Oh, and friends, here's the truth. As you commit to God with respect to whatever commitment it was that you and him have had a little conversation about, he commits right back to you. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Right now, whether you're in the auditorium, you're watching online, maybe you're watching it at a coffee shop, somewhere down the road, it doesn't matter. God is looking at you right now. And as you make your commitment to him, he is committing himself and all the resources of heaven to you. It's incredible. In a moment, we're going to have baptisms. This is kind of a cool weekend for me. Because 47 years ago, this weekend, I got baptized here at First Alliance Church. 1201 Glenmore Trail. Pastor Lowell Young. My wife and I both did. It was incredible. And Pastor Young wrote me a note in the days following my baptism, and he had some kind words to say to me. And then he finished it with this. Continue to share your faith Continue to grow in the grace of our Lord. Continue to grow in the grace of our Lord. Got me thinking again. 
What would have happened if I'd seen my baptism as an ending instead of a next step? What would have happened if I got stuck there? Well, I can assure you, Dawn, my wife wouldn't have been happy. My kids wouldn't have been happy. My grandkids wouldn't have been happy. The people in my circle of influence wouldn't be happy. And friends, I don't think you'd be happy if I was stuck where I was back there in January of 1975. It's a life of growth. It's a life of pursuing Jesus. And it's not that we have to, we get to. It's incredible. And tonight, we get to share in the next step of some people as they are baptized. Let's rejoice with them and let's continue to follow Jesus.
blessing. If you're online, we just want you to celebrate with us as well. Just because you're not here, we still want you to be part of this wonderful celebration. Let's keep going. Can I invite you to stand and sing this one with us as you just join with these people here? Amen. Who am I that the highest king would welcome? I was lost, but he brought me his love. amazing just seeing so many people growing in their relationship with Christ and yeah. uh, just right here in front of us if you are seeing that and thinking I want to grow I want to make this choice I want to declare myself in front of all these people I'm check out baptism it, it's amazing yeah you can text baptism and you can get some information on that you guys this is such an important step we are so excited for everybody back there Woo! let's give one more cheer come on let's do that Man. And what a great sermon. You know, my, I, had a, I had a takeaway when I was uh, listening to Les's sermon. Uh, 1975 is when he got baptized, and I wasn't born. Oh, that's your takeaway. I don't want to say he's old, but he looks great for his age, doesn't he? Hey, my daughter thinks you look 40. I think it's awesome. Yeah. No, uh, I, I just think it was amazing. It was, it was yes. a fantastic sermon. And I just think, you know, all of us have a chance to grow. Whether you're 12 or whether you're 80, you can grow. Whether you've been to seminary or whether it's your first time at church, we can grow. We can change. And we are called to do that. Mm. And when you do, there is nothing more attractive to others than you growing. And I'm not saying you're looking for a spouse. I'm saying that, <laughs> you know, when we are trying to draw people to God, mm -hmm. 
And there is nothing, when you see somebody lose weight, you're like, what are you doing? When you see somebody who's working out, you're like, oh, what have you been doing? I want to know about that. And when we grow in Christ, people are drawn to it and they want to know what we're doing. They see that change in us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. Um, if you want prayer tonight, we want to pray with you. So if you can't stay and you got to go, you can text prayer. We'll get in touch with you. We would love to pray with you. If you want prayer right in here tonight, um, please raise your hand. Stay where you are. Our prayer team will come to you and keep that safe distance that we need to do, but they will pray alongside you. That is what we desire to do as we grow together, um, is to be able to pray as a community and hold each other up in prayer. So, so stay where you are, raise your hand, and someone will come to you. And as you leave today, yeah, yeah just make sure that you um, uh, keep your, your distancing as you leave today. If you're online, Corey will be back with you in a second to give you some details around prayer and, 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 and uh, any thoughts on there online. That was for me. I know. That was I for me. It was yours. Yeah. I missed it. Anyways, but yes, this week, guys, let's go out. Let's, let's think about where God is calling you to grow and uh, what your next right thing is. And we'll, uh, and we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Mm-hmm.